afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the Starship webinar. Today, we're going to talk about five benefits of migrating from ship gear to Starship. Thanks for joining us today. Just a brief PowerPoint first, and then we'll take you into the product demo. A little bit about V Technologies first. The company's been around for 33 years, starting in the late 80s, with a customer base of over 10,000 customers. Uh, we started uh, initially with the EPS and FedEx integrations for small package. And about uh, 10, 11 years ago, we branched out into LTL and freight shipping as well. Working with Macola since the early 90s, going back to DOS through Exact and now ECI software. Quick slide here about some of the differences between the two different products. Essentially, ship gear is a piece of middleware that will integrate into your UPS World Ship or FedEx Ship Manager platform, whereas Starship gives you multi-carrier, multi-mode um, shipping options in a single platform. Some of the enhanced features with Starship are the ability to get at the McCola line items. Uh, so with line items, we use that information to link to anything commodity-driven, such as uh, harmonized codes, Schedule B codes for shipping internationally, NMFC codes, freight classes for LTL shipping, any hazmat shipments uh, with proper shipping name, UNID, linking to the McCola item. Uh, so quite a bit we can do there with items, also tying in with your um, EDI system for doing uh, fulfillment for your trading partners. Starship has a uh, links into a number of different third-party applications, including EDI, warehouse management, and e-commerce. The ship here is basically just the UPS and FedEx small package only. The nature of having all the carriers into one platform gives you the ability to do rate shopping. So you can do a cost comparison side by side with all your various carriers and make an educated decision about which way you want to shift that out. Starship also allows you to process batches of records. So if you have weights in inventory or you've defined packaging in Starship, you have the ability to run through a range of orders instead of just going one at a time. As I mentioned, EDI, uh, we have uh, the ability to link into any of the um, EDI solutions that are used with Macola, such as Data Masons, BSI, SPS, Gentran, One EDI. Also gives you the ability to print your 128 labels and any trading partner specific documentation. Starship also has uh, e-commerce extensions with the ability to link into multiple marketplaces and shopping carts and the ability to use discounted rates with the post office. Uh, Starship has pricing comparable to commercial plus pricing available to any of its users. Uh, with discounts that uh, you typically have to be a much higher volume shipper in order to achieve that on your own with the post office. By virtue of the fact that you're using Starship, you have access to those discounted rates, whether you're shipping one package or a thousand. So the way that Starship ties everything in to Macola and the other applications on your network, um, you're able to have a single repository of data with touch points into the other applications in your supply chain that are feeding information such as uh, warehouse management systems like Wysys or McCullough's WMS or any of the EDI solutions that I mentioned. Uh, we also have all of the e-commerce solutions, basically tying all that information into one user interface, one database with hooks into any of those different platforms that you need to connect with and then feeding all the information back into McCullough so you have it there for customer service. To look at some of the carriers that are available uh, through Starship as add-on modules. You may recognize a number of names there. We have all the small package carriers and then also about 20 different LTL options as well. We also have partnered with some 3PL organizations like Freight Quote and C.H. Robinson and Worldwide Express. Let's look at some of the various e-commerce platforms that Starship can connect to. We started with uh, Amazon and eBay probably about five years ago and have built that out into about a dozen different e-commerce connections. 
the way that can work is Starship can connect directly to any of the marketplaces or shopping carts directly, pull that information in and give you the ability to ship your product and push back information into the carts you have it there on the customer portal. With Macola, you have the ability to pull data out of Macola so we can flag the shipments as e-commerce coming out of Macola on the order header or the line item level. And then uh, we'll hit the APIs for all the various carts or marketplaces as it's processing the shipment. So we'll be able to update both the cart status and Macola with the shipment detail. And with that, we will get into the product demonstration. So here's a look at the newer web client version of Starship. It's now available for Macola. Uh, we support versions uh, going back as far as 75103D on progression, uh, all the way through ES and the most recent Macola version on um, version 10. A little bit uh, different look here than uh, the ship gear interface that you may be interested, uh, may be used to using the uh, the keyed import on the world ship or the uh, ship manager screen. Uh, you have everything in one browser view here. Uh, you have access to all of your pending sales transactions coming out of Macola here. You could simply do the same sort of keyed import where you type in or scan in the sales transaction that you want to ship here. Uh, you can multi-select transactions over here. Uh, you also have the ability to group related transactions if you want to process a batch of records going to the same location or you have filters so you can drill down into a subset of data and you can do lookups here by any number of uh, order fields any of the address information to narrow down that view We'll go ahead and pick our first transaction here and get started with processing shipment. Starship's gonna connect over to Macola, same way that Shipgear would, and bring up all the information on the screen here. Moving left to right, you have all the pertinent information in these various widgets here. Have the Macola order data, return address, you have multiple senders or return addresses, different entities that you ship on behalf of, you can set those up. That can be triggered from the Macola order. Have your ship to information here. You'll notice a green checkbox there, let you know that we validated the address. Starship offers address validation as a standard feature across the board with all the various carriers. With that, we'll check the city, state, and zip, get down to the second address line, can add the zip plus four, and we can abbreviate the street, boulevard, road. And we'll also flag the type of address, so if it's residential, a rural area, and there are surcharges that apply from the carrier, you're catching that right up front, so you're working with a clean address, and any of the charges that will be assessed against your shipment, and you're capturing all of those as soon as you bring the order over from Macola. We'll do a value translation on the ship via code. If the user has permission, they can always override that here. You can switch between carriers and service levels. And if you have collect or third-party accounts where your customer is paying for the shipping charges, you can bring those in as well. Take a look at the packaging here. Starship will integrate with a number of different uh, hardware options. Uh, we have you know, your traditional parcel scale. So if you have hardware from the uh, World ship or ship manager system, most likely a Fairbanks or a Toledo scale. Uh, those will plug in. We work with all major manufacturers of uh, parcel scales. We also work with Cubiscan uh, scanner scales that can capture the weight and dimensions of your products. Uh, so you can put the product on the scale, it'll read the length, width, and height, and then also weigh that. And then whichever the higher the two of those are, that is what the carrier will assess the charges against. If you have weights in inventory, those will come over from Macola as well. So I should also has a packaging database. So you can add all of your own custom packaging to Starship and it will uh, be selectable here. You could also build relationships between the quantity of a particular product and the container that it goes into. Uh, you can see here, 
the contents of the package were just two pounds based on the items. But uh, based on the size of the, the box, the carrier will actually assess the charges at 22 pounds. So pretty crucial there, difference in price based on the size, the amount of cubic space it's going to take up on the truck versus just the weight of the product itself. You also have the packing assistant that can give you a little more visibility into the products here. So you have multiple pieces. You can pack those out into different containers. You can also build your pallets here. Once you've got everything packed up, if you're ready to process, uh, Starship has keyboard shortcuts for all the common program functions. So F3, or you can scan a barcode to emulate that keystroke that'll process your shipment. You also have the ship and process icon here at the bottom of the screen. Now this brought over the shipment as FedEx. Uh, we can also take a look at multiple carriers rates here by running the rate shopping. Starship also has both rate shopping and ship via rules that can be selected uh, to add some additional logic to your rate shopping experience and have the decision taken out of the hands of the operator and let the system do the thinking for you. So this came over here as FedEx home delivery, but you can see there are other potentially uh, more cost effective ways to get it there by either UPS or post office. So you can let Starship pick that for you if you want. The operator can choose here. You can sort that by the price or the transit time. You can also put in a date and time here when you want the product to be there by, and that'll parse out any of the services that can't make that transit time. We'll go ahead and stick with FedEx as that's what was on the order. We'll keep that ship via, so I'll go ahead and process the ship in now. With that, we'll Print out all of your labels, your packing list, whatever documents need to go with the shipment. If it's going freight, your bill of lading, overseas, all, all of your export documentation. If it's EDI, any of your 128 labels or other trading partner documentation. And with that, we'll feed all the information back into McCola. Before we take a look back in McCola, let's go ahead and process an LTL order. So really the same sort of workflow for LTO. Again, you can scan or enter the order that you want to ship there. And we'll pick this order here. So for LTL, really no difference. Um, it'll be flagged as an LTL shipment. You'll see some additional bill of lading information. Take a look at our products and our as I mentioned, you have um, the additional fields that are available at the item level, and you can see those here. So we can flag things like uh, the international harmonized codes, whether or not it's hazmat, lot numbers, and freight class and description. With the LTL shipments, you have the three layers of packing. You have the items which go onto boxes and boxes that go on pallets. And you also have access to rate shopping as well for LTL. So this came over as a UPS freight shipment. We can see there's potentially lots of other options that could get it there cheaper. We'll go ahead and pick this guy here. RNL can get it there the fastest and the cheapest. And I'll just process my shipments, and that'll print out any of the documents that we need in order to get that out. Package labels, pallet labels, packing list, um, bill of lading. You'll see just a preview here of some of the different templates that are available. With any of the modules that we have um, by default with the carriers, uh, we can link to their APIs and get the documents directly from the carriers as well. Take a look back here in McCola. Starship can uh, put the same type of information as well as some additional fields back into either the order header or the line comment, similar to ship gear. 
So with that, we're gonna tell you when it went out, when it's gonna get there, piece counts. Uh, there's also a unique bill of lading number that Starship will assign. Number of pallets, and then the contents of the shipment here with your pro number from the carrier. For the billing, we can put the freight charges here onto the order freight field, or you also have the manifest table that can be enabled in Macola. That will capture the information here as well. Now let's take a look at our FedEx shipment as well. Same detail here. You can have different notes between both parcel and freight mode, and those are fully customizable. And then you'll have your freight and your tracking, tracking number for each piece of parcels that you shipped out over here. Starship also has a SQL extension, so if there are any custom fields that you have set up in Macola or other databases of information that you want to merge with Starship, you have the ability to bring those in as well. And that can extend Starship to really any platforms on uh, your system, whether that be a CRM, a service database, basically any ODBC compliant database on your network, we have the ability to read and write data to with that SQL extension that opens up a lot of options for merging data with what we do with McCola out of the box. I mentioned all the documents that you get with Starship. Let's take a look at some of those here. Uh, you have, of course, you know your thermal labels that you can print out, but Starship can also give you um, kind of these hybrid forms that give you both the shipping label and the packing list together. You have a couple of different formats of those here. Change the orientation on the page. You can also get just plain uh, packing lists as well. Export documents, we have the commercial invoice, the NAFTA certificate of origin. We also have a U.S. certificate of origin. Or if you're working with a broker, the shipper's letter of instruction. Uh, for freight, you have a number of different uh, templates. As I mentioned, you can get the bills of lading and labels directly from the carrier APIs, or Starship has its own generic templates built in. You have the straight bill of lading, the VIX bill of lading. You also have a master BOL if uh, you're doing a truckload or multi-stop type shipment. And there's also a hazmat bill of lading as well. Any of those documents can be modified here in the template designer. So you'll have all those uh, documents built into Starship out of the box here that you can then modify with whatever formatting changes you'd like to make. If you're familiar with working with a report designer like Crystal Reports, uh, this is XY coordinates on the page. And you have the ability to get in here and add objects to the page. You can add your company logo or whatever graphics you'd like to. You can draw on the page. Uh, any data can be barcoded. So if you see it on the screen, you can grab that information and place a barcode on the document. Uh, bands of text where you have these columns of data that line up, each individual field or blocks of text. So you can take any of the information we have here, wipe that out, free up some space or put your own verbiage in there. Any of the fields can be manipulated and you have different categories of data here based on the type of information that uh, you want to display on the page. Just navigate to that category. Looking at our line items, here's our line item field. So basically you just need to know what it is that you see on the screen that you want to place in the document. Navigate to that field, edit that, and place it wherever you want. Once you have this set up the way you like, do a save as here. Give that a unique name, and this becomes another version of that document that you can then print. Along with the documents, you have the ability to include those as attachments with any of the email notifications. Uh, similar to ShipGear, you do have the e-notify option with some additional 
features available in Starship. You have some templates that are built in, which you can then modify. It's the same as any of the printed forms. You have uh, blocks of text or individual fields that you can add to the email body here. You can also do some branding. So you can add your own color scheme for both the fonts and the background color. You can insert links back into your cart, tables, graphics. So you can have this set up exactly how you'd like with your own information on there. It's a preview of some of the things that you can do. Uh, the attachments can also be set up so that we can pull that from an external directory. Or as I mentioned, Starship can PDF all of its documents and then with the ship notifications that go out, whether those are internal alerts or customer facing alerts, you can have copies of uh, each of the PDF documents attached to the email automatically. And those can be sent out in real time, or you can set up a schedule here. Uh, you can have it sync to a certain time of day or process, or those can be queued up and someone can go in manually and release that batch of emails. Just like the printed forms, you can have multiple iterations of your email templates, and those can be customized with rules that tell Starship to pull a certain version of that email based on the audience. So hopefully if you are proactively notifying your customers each time you send them something, that cuts down on the number of customer service calls that you'll be receiving. Of course, you have the information at your fingertips on the Mercola order. If uh, you have folks that are in a call center or customer service that don't live inside of Mercola, you also have access to the dashboard. Dashboard is a browser-based view of the historical data in Starship that comes with the Starship license. Uh, so really anybody in the front office, anyone in the organization that might need to have access to the history or reporting uh, can do so without uh, taking up a seat on your license. Dashboard gives you a number of canned uh, charts or reports here where you can drill down into your shipping volume over a period of time and do sorts by carrier, location, mode of transports, your top five customers and users. And you've got those all here that can be exported. They also have the heat map and that can give you some visibility into where you're shipping the most concentration of product to across the country. And then for historical purposes, you have access to all of the records here, both the pending transactions and the history. You can do lookups here by a date range or really any of the information that we have coming out of Macola can be queried. So you can filter on really virtually any field within Starship or anything that you've brought over from Macola here. So POs, any of the address fields, any of the item information can be used to find the shipment and bring it up. This will bring you into a historical view. You can set up user permissions based on their role with the company and what they have access to. This would give them the ability to track the packages here. Because we have a test account, this is telling us here that uh, FedEx can't find the shipment that we just processed. That's because it's a, not a live record. Uh, you have Access to the freight charges here, that could include any kind of handling fee or discounts that you've uh, set with freight rules. And someone can go in and see exactly how the freight was broken down and any rules that were applied. This also gives you access to any of the documents. So you can come in here, reprint labels, any documents that were produced with the shipment. And the history can be set uh, as, as short as 60 days or uh, up to two years, or you can set it to never purge your records. You can also set a threshold on how long you want to keep any of those attachments around. All right, those are the features and functions we had prepared to share with everyone today. And with that, we'll wrap it up. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.